When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Were you worried that I wouldn't be here today because of the storm? I was. That's why I texted you all last night. Yeah, I uh, appreciate that. So um, it's very... So, first of all, we had super bad storms last night with tornadoes, rain-wrapped tornadoes. And, you know, it's not it's not common to have this kind of weather this time of year. I remember several years back, we did have like a Christmas Day tornado, but that's not very common. But last night, it was just like we knew that we were going to have bad weather and there were a possibility of... of tornadoes but you know when you're when you're having to sit up all night and wait on the alerts and watch the news you know the kids got some sleep the kids got sleep you know but tornadoes don't really give a whole bunch of warning you have to you get the alert and you have to run to a safe place in your in your house so mm-hmm. our safe place is the half bath and I told we told the kids you know, hey, this is this is a thing. We tried to get them to sleep in our room, but I have a 16 and a 12 year old, and they started fighting over who was sleeping where. And I just told them to get out. <laughs> I told them to get out, man. Uh, and gosh. I said, look, if if okay, you guys go to the other side of the house, and just if if something bad happens, I'm just gonna have to run over there and 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 get you and drag you into the half bath. They know where the where the safe space is, but you know. I was kind of torn between, hey, man, am I going to listen to him argue all night or, or am I just going to say, you know what, <laughs> going to be up as a dad, you know, you're going to be awake and you're going to, yeah. you know, our news teams do a good job of kind of telling you where the storm is and how long you have until it gets there. There's really not a whole lot of warning. There may or may not be a, a tornado in, in some of those storms, but they had, it was a high probability that there was going to be some tornadoes. And there were, there were some tornadoes, but, you know, my guys were unscathed. Some power went out at some of the guys' houses. And um, it's just different from a hurricane. You know, we're no strangers to hurricanes, you know, but you you kind of know how big the hurricane's going to be. You know what to prepare for. Mm-hmm. If you, for the most part, if you're going to evacuate, you, you can, you know that in advance and you, um, you have time to plan for it. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, you really have a week with hurricanes. But... Yeah. You just don't know exactly where it's going. You know, once it once it gets in the Gulf, you know, all those spaghetti models come out and you kind of, oh, is it going to New Orleans? Is it going to Houston? Is it going to Panama City? Where is it going? And you don't really know once it gets up close. You know, it can, it can shift one way or the other, but you pretty much know if it's going to be like a Category 3, 4, you know, yeah. or if it's going to be a tropical depression. But... Anyway, last night we didn't have that kind of warning, but um, I wanted to be, you know, like when when something like that happens and I know, like I was up all night for the most part, I know my guys were up all night, but I I just wanted to be there. You know, I took them donuts this morning because I'm just so thankful for the guys because I know that, you know, some of them had power outages. A lot of them were up all night, just like me and they show up, you know, and I'm, and I'm thankful Mm -hmm. for those guys and, you know, you just Tor- tornadoes are no joke, too. I mean, I'm sure they were fearful. Some of them have kids. We we so we get tornado watches every summer. Mm-hmm. We've I've never seen a tornado in person, so we don't we don't take them seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, and then last summer, we were out to dinner. Tornado watch comes in. We're like, ah, oh, no big deal. Like, let's just finish dinner. We'll go home. Um, and we were wrapping up dinner. I paid the bill. We got in the truck. Um, I stopped over at one of my favorite stores to get a nice bottle of bourbon. Um, and while I was in the store, I got a tornado watch. A tornado warning, rather. Not a watch. Yeah, that's why I got out of the store. 
got in the truck, started driving home. We were only about seven minutes from home. By time, by time I got like a minute, two minutes down the road, pitch black, zero visibility, except for a big back black funnel cloud about a mile up the road. Mm -hmm. It was, it was the most scared I've ever been in my entire life. It was the first time I ever saw one in person, right? Cause we always get, I mean, they, they touch down here and there, but I mean, this, this was crazy. I mean, our kids were off from school for like two days because one of the schools had tornado damage. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it was wild, man. There was a lot of destruction. Um, so now I take them very seriously. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm the same way. I, I, for the longest time, I've never seen a tornado, but I saw one a couple of years ago. It went right across the road. It was like less than a mile in front of me, but the, you kind of... I kind of got the sense beforehand before I saw a tornado in person that I could just easily turn around and run from it. Mm -hmm. I was so petrified when I saw it. It was like, Oh my gosh. I mean, you're not going to turn around and run from it. If you're just, a, you know, if you've never well, seen the, any. Yeah. The problem is too, like, so we're driving home. Right. And now I'm four minutes away from the restaurant. I have no idea which way this thing's going. Mm -hmm. I got to drive straight into it to get home. Yeah. with like zero visibility and we're you know we're in a more rural town i mean we're like 15 minutes from the beach but our town's more rural so there's nowhere for me to even stop in between there it's just yeah. it's just tree line roads and i i got nowhere to even stop to like keep the kids safe and that i mean the kids are screaming in the back are we gonna die are we gonna die yeah uh it was so but yeah <laughs> as, as you were saying it, it makes you um you know, even when there's just a, a watch or a warning, um, you know, it, it makes you really grateful for the things that you have. Right. Yeah. Really grateful that our house wasn't hit. Really grateful that, you know, none of our guys were hit. None of our guys were injured. Anything like that. Because, um, like I said, that, I mean, that was the most scared I've ever been in my whole life. I, we couldn't see anything. It was just wind blowing, trees falling. It was. Oof. I mean, those trees are no yeah. match for a. Your car, an eighteen wheeler, is no match from for a, a tornado, and you you are just absolutely helpless whenever you are stuck on the road and you just see how how devastating they can be. Um, and it does make you thankful. I mean, one one of the things I try to be in my life is thankful, and you know, I, I kind of go back to the guys this morning. I nobody wants to 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 have to get up and come in and do work on no sleep, you know, and that's what, that's the, well, that's what last night was, was no sleep because you just don't know. And you can't just fall asleep um, not knowing because you're not going to have any time to wake up and, and, and do mm -hmm. it, you know, waking up disoriented, trying to run and get everybody to, you know, to the, to the safe spot. But, you know, and it, I kind of think back on, on those guys and I, and I think about every one of them that, that, there was a time in my life where I didn't know who they were and they just came to me or they came to my, you know, to my company wanting a job. And I'm thankful that things lined up where they were able to come and be a part of, of, of my company, because there was a time when I didn't want to give somebody that chance because hiring somebody, if you're new to the business and you, are worried about all the things that go with, with building a company, the personnel and hiring somebody is a huge stressor. And my initial um, mentality was, I don't want to hire somebody because I may have to fire them. I don't want any problems because, you know, if I just do all the work myself, there won't be any problems. And, you know, just like I do now, looking back at, at my my old self, that's just a foolish way to think. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it, it, there's actually two sides to that coin because it's like at first you're scared to hire people because you're going to fire them. You might have to fire them, right? And then you you, you finally get over that hump, right? I'm, I'm going to hire someone. You hire someone, then you hire a second guy. And then you got over that first hump of that. There's the other hump of being afraid to fire, right? 
Mm-hmm. So you get it past that hump of hiring them. Now they start making in this money, right? And mm-hmm. you're making, you know, call it twice as much money with two guys, right? Yeah. As opposed to just one guy. And then, uh, you know, there was actually just a question on the Success Academy this morning about that. Like, then you become fearful to fire them because how are you going to replace that income? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, it's a double-sided coin there, right? You, you got to get over the hump of hiring people um, and you got to treat those guys right and all that. But when to- when when it's time to let them go, you got to let them go and you got to not be fearful about, oh, how am I going to get another guy? How am I going to get someone to replace his income? Yeah. And it's a real fear and it happens to all of us. I want to go back and talk about just being mentally ready to hire somebody at all times, because it never happens. It never works out to where you sit there and you're like, great, I'm ready to hire somebody. And somebody walks through the door and wants a job. In fact, it's always the most inopportune times whenever you, you don't really need somebody, but you can't decide when that good quality employee is going to walk through your door. I, I was just thinking the other day about, one of my guys in particular, I was sitting at the shop one day. Well, now, now this was this was a few years ago. I was sitting at the office, and I was actually waiting for um, the sheetrock contractor to come by so I could pay him because one of my guys had they were doing a repipe and they he stuck his foot through the through the ceiling and uh, <laughs> I had to I had to pay our guy our subcontractor to go redo the the ceiling and, and paint it. But I've never seen my subcontractor before. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I was supposed to be bringing him a check, or he was coming to get a check. So I was kind of sitting there waiting, and I looked out the, the window, and uh, this guy pulls up on a Harley. And uh, I was like, man, that must be him. And uh, so I got my check, I got my check ready, and I opened the, the door. And um, I, um, I said, hey, you you here to pick up a check? And he's like, no, I'm actually looking for a job. And immediately, immediately my thought went to, oh, no, now now he's got me out here and now he wants to talk about working for me and I'm not prepared Mm -hmm. for that. And I wish I hadn't answered the door. That that's what I thought. Like I was so scared, like I needed time. You know, I needed I got to mentally prepare to, to talk to somebody about coming to work for me, because in my mind years ago, there were all these criteria that these people had to meet before I would even talk to them. You know, I was kind of creating a standard that may be impossible to to meet, which put me in my comfort zone, because if they can't meet it, then I don't have to hire them, right? Yeah. And and it's their fault, because I can't find good help. And so therefore, I can just make that excuse. But anyway, so this guy, I found out that he needed a job and I, and I actually said, I said, no, man, we're not hiring right now. But I said, you know what? I mean, something had, had just told me not to, I mean, I don't know if it was intuition, but something said, don't, don't turn this guy away. Just at least talk to him, you know? And, um, so he came in and we talked and he said he was just looking for another opportunity. He wasn't, he wasn't super happy at his other job because he was at my front door, you know, and, he just wanted to see how we operated and wanted to see what we had to offer. And I ended up talking to the guy for 30 or 45 minutes. And by this time I had already had a general manager and I, I didn't want to make that decision. So I, I called my general manager and I said, man, told him what happened, told him the whole story about how I thought, I thought it was a sheet rocker. And we had a good laugh. And then he brought the guy back in and talked to him and, and he hired him and, you know, he's been working for us ever since has made us, not only has he made us a bunch of money, but he he has taken care of customers. He's a very, uh, he's got a good heart and he wants to help the company. And I don't know how many people I've turned away because I had all these, I was, I was in a predisposition to say, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to deal with having to learn how they're going to be. Yeah. And that just there there are so many examples of that throughout my life where when I when I got over that hurdle of of 
you have to hire people. You have to be recruiting people and you have to give them a chance. Let's face it. Home service companies are a dime a dozen. and Mrs. Jones has many to choose from. Now it may not be PC, but she does judge a book by its cover. That's why there's Kick Charge, the industry's leading and most awarded branding and truck wrap design agency who has been instrumental in getting home service providers noticed for over 20 years. And right now, Kick Charge is offering a $500 rebate to all Coaches Corner listeners. To get more information, Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash kick charge and start getting noticed today. So there's that, but there's all, there are also, there are also other stories about, you know, when I was looking for somebody, when I was in new construction, one of my old um, coaches from high school, I'd still, I was in con- contact with him and I said, you know, I'm looking for some help. And he said, man, why don't you call down there to the, um, it's a vocational center that the high school kids go to where they're mm-hmm. looking to, to, to be in the trades. Yeah. He said, just, just call down there and see if they got anybody worth giving a, a summer job to. And, you know, I called down there and the guy said, well, I'll, I'll, I got a, I got a few guys in mind. I'll ask them if they, if they're interested. And one of them called and man, he came in and he was just a young kid, but you can, you could see that he was, in, he was, he was mechanically inclined. He had no interest in going to college um, he didn't know a whole lot about plumbing, but you could tell that he was a good person that he wanted to learn. And he ended up staying with me for a few years and he has since gone on. And he, I think he works, you know, on a pipeline somewhere, making a bunch of money, doing a bunch of traveling. You know, do you have, do you have situations like that where you, where you, where, if you think back when you first started out, it is overwhelming, right? To, to realize that you're going to be responsible for these people when you say, yeah, come on, let's, let's give it a shot. Yeah. I mean, so when I first started out, um, my little cousin was my helper. Um, so I started out with one employee, but you know, he wasn't out there doing work. So then it came time where it was like, Hey man, we we were doing new construction and we were doing service residential service and we were doing heating and we were doing everything right um we were doing remodels so it came a time where i was like oh, i can't keep up with this like i'm gonna have to hire someone right um and it's really important not to not listen to people but know who to listen to um because when it came time to hire people you know i start talking to my other people who have you know, been in business or own businesses or stuff like that. Um, and, you know, some people are like, yeah, you know, so one person told me I had, I had two candidates for the one job and I was trying to pick between the two of them. And then one person told me, well, why don't you just hire both of them? Like you got all this work, you can't get to it, blah, blah, blah. Why don't you just hire both of them? And then I got someone else saying, oh, are you sure that you can, you want to hire someone? Like it's really expensive and you got to have all this money in the bank and you got to buy a truck and you got to buy tools and, you know, you're going to be out 20 grand before they even start, you know? Yeah. Um. So that's the type of person you don't want to listen to, right? That's That's the type of person that's adverse to risk. That's the type of person that maybe they owned a business and now they have a corporate job and they like the corporate job a lot better because it gives them stability and they don't have to worry about the risk that goes into owning a business. Um, luckily I didn't listen to those people. Um, and I wound up hiring both guys. Uh, and you know, it's the old adage, you know, hire, hire two guys. One of them might work out. Right. (laughs) Um, so, and then, so I, I hired the, the two guys and, um, one of them worked out. (laughs) Um, so, you know, and then I find myself, you know, three weeks, maybe like five weeks down the line from making a decision to hire both these guys, I hire them, they start, uh, and you know, three or four weeks in, I got to let one of the guys go. Cause he just, I mean, you know, I left him to do a little, a little tiny bathroom remodel, put in a shower valve (laughs) and, uh, just, uh, take, they had a single lavatory. We're going to split it into two lavatories. 
so they could do a double sink mm-hmm. um, and just put a new flange on the toilet so that because it was all routed away. And uh, I came back and both the sink arms were pitched the wrong way. <laughs> and the shower valve was in upside down. <laughs> the, guy, the guy didn't even know how to use a level. So he had to go. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, tell me, tell me how that went. Like mentally, was that the first time you, was that your very first termination that you had to do? No. So that was actually, I, I got a little ahead of myself. That was actually my third. Um, the first guy. He just came out uh, firing. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I haven't fired. Well, no, that's not true. Um, <laughs> in four years, I've fired four people. Uh, yeah. So, um, but no, the first guy actually, I hired him, you know, I a big, long search, right? I got to find the right guy. I've got to find the right guy. I got to find mm-hmm. the right guy. Um, and he started work on a Friday. Um, and he was fired Saturday morning. Um, the record for shortest employment. <laughs> <of the morning. laughs> it is one, one day, a little over 24 hours. Um, yeah, I had to fire him because I sent him to hook up a dryer. He was there for like four hours. I'm like, what the heck is taking this guy so long? And, he, you know, I talked to him. He's like, oh, I'm just a little nervous. I want to make sure everything's done right. I want to double and triple check everything. I'm like, all right, man, no problem. So I was still in the truck, obviously. Um, and I was working the next day on one of our new construction jobs that we had going on. Um, at first thing in the morning, I got a call from the customer and I, I had known the customer because I've been to his house a bunch of times and <laughs> I get a call from the customer and he's like, uh, you know, can you just do me a favor? I had a stroke last year and I can't use my left arm. Can you just come over and flip the dryer door for me so I can open it with my right hand? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no problem, man. I'll stop, I'll stop over and do that for you. Um, so I stop over. And, you know, he's talking, he's, oh, that guy yesterday was so nice. You know, he was struggling a little bit with the gas line. You know, it took, it took him about an hour to hook it up to the dryer. I'm like, it's just a gas flex. Like, what, what could be taking this guy so long? So I peek back there. And I'm like, it doesn't register in my head. I, I see it hooked up and whatever. And I actually, uh, I go to leave. I get outside to the truck. I sit down in the truck. I turn the truck on. I go, wait a second. What did I just look at? Did I really just see what I just saw? Yeah, like it, it clicked like three minutes later. So I knock on the door again. I'm like, I'm sorry, I got to come in. I got to come in and look at something. And basically Home Depot had came to hook it up, right? And you know, they have those real skinny three-eighths gas flexes. Mm-hmm. So, so Home Depot had come to hook this up and they put the gas flex on and then they were like, oh, we can't do it because there's no valve, blah, 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 mm-hmm. which is... The biggest gimmick ever, right? Because yeah. Home Depot is not allowed to hook up gas yeah. products in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not allowed to touch gas. So they come and they put the gas cock on and then they never refund you your 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, anyway, he couldn't get the 3 ace gas flex adapter off, he told me. It was on too tight, which I grabbed a pair of little baby channel locks and got it off myself. Um, so he took a half inch black coupling wrapped the flare end of the gas flex with Teflon tape and rammed that half inch black coupling onto that and then hooked up our gas flex to it. Mm. Yeah. I literally took it off and it was good. It was going like this in my hands wobbling. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he had to go. And then the second guy just had no idea what he was doing, but um, so Right. So that that's what leads me to that, uh, you know, start seeking advice before I hire someone again, right? Like the first mm-hmm. two really didn't work out. Like, yeah, and um, there was some anxiety there, right? Like, talk about talk about what it was like mentally to have to say, "Now I got to go to this guy and tell him, man, you weren't all you were, you weren't all that you you promised you were going to be." Or I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, no. Um, so my that was my third time I fired someone the first time was just like an instant um like he's got to go right like he put someone's life in danger he's got to go um the second one was a little tougher um but the third one was 
someone that I had known for probably like three years. Mm -hmm. Um, so that one, I, I didn't get much sleep the night before I was, I, I didn't want to have to fire him. Um, yeah. and just like, even like sending that text, right. Like meet, meet me at my house in the morning, not at the shop. Right. Like, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm a big fan of fire someone on a Thursday or a Friday, not right. in the middle of the week. Um, give them the weekends, cool their head, figure out what their next plan is. Um, and I really liked him. He just, he told me he was a technician, right? Mm -hmm. And then he didn't even know how to read a level and he put a shower valve in upside down. So it's like, um, but I, you know, I liked him so much that I actually got him his next job. You know, I liked him as a person just fine. Um, which is like, I think that's a big lesson to people is, firing people doesn't have to always be a bad thing right Absolutely. um you know it's it's the same thing in life with like i mean i'm sure you've gone through this like friends come and go right yeah like you know where 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 when you're friends with someone it's because they currently have something in common with you right mm -hmm. um and people grow and evolve and it could happen pretty quickly or it could happen over a long period of time but as you grow and evolve you and that friend may not have as much in common anymore. Um, so, or it could be the opposite. You could have so much in common that you're both so busy that you just don't have time to talk or hang out with each other. Um, and that's not a bad thing, right? Okay. That That's, that's, that's right. what leads us to evolution in life. Right. Um, yeah. That's what, that, what, you know, I'm a big proponent of personal development. Mm -hmm. I have a personal development coach that he calls me a, ton of money every month and it's worth every single dollar because mm -hmm. my philosophy is I want to be getting 1% better in all aspects of my life every single day. So not just as a business owner, not just as a leader, but as a husband, as a father, right? These are all things that I want to be working on. Um, well, and two, you can't, if, if, if we're talking about, there are two things that I don't want to forget to talk about. One yeah, sorry. Is, our, our ADD is kind of taking us off on little no, different no, but That's just going to be, ADD is just going to be part of our podcast. Hey, plumbing pro, you wouldn't plumb a house without a blueprint. So why are you trying to build your plumbing business without one? Grab your free copy of my million dollar plumber blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining and very profitable plumbing business. Don't risk years of wasted time and money and failure. Grab your million dollar plumber blueprint now. And it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner follower. Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash free and plumb like a champion. Yeah, and I wanted to talk about what it's like to hire a friend as well, because I wish that somebody had given me advice about that because it I don't recommend it. I think it's a terrible idea to hire your friend. And that's a little counterintuitive because if you don't have any experience with that, you would think that that would be a really great thing that you guys could just work together and you're, you have a history together and you can be a team. But the fact is you've got a history of being equals. And when you have a company and you're the leader, that relationship has to change and you have to be, able to count on somebody and you have to be able to lead somebody. And from my experience, I mean, I've, I've had some, I've had some bad experiences. One in particular that I hired a friend and it just got, at first it was great because we didn't have, we didn't have any roadblocks. We didn't have any things that we had to talk about any issues, but as soon as the issues started coming up, you know, tardiness, uh, whatever, I, you know, there are, there are all kind of issues that come up, but when it's a friend that you have to go to and say, you know, odds are that you're not going to be taken seriously because, you know, you who do you think you are, man? We're friends, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, it was, it was one of the <clears> hardest, <throat> the hardest firing I've had to do because when you, when you have to terminate somebody that you're friends with, all those personal feelings come into play and, I've I've not since hired a a friend 
after that because it really put a strain on our relationship. We stopped being friends for a little while and, you know, we got over it eventually, but I just think it's a, it's a, it's something to avoid, you know, just, just start fresh with somebody that is, that you can just have a work relationship with, and you will become friends with them, no doubt, because the culture in your company, um, you can't help, but, but, become friendly with someone and well and be yeah, part of I, th I think that's an important distinction is become friendly with them mm -hmm. versus become friends with them because that's yeah. another caveat and we could spend a whole episode on that um but um maybe maybe we'll do that on our next episode yeah. you know the how to how to draw those lines of i'm a leader i'm the ceo you, I think that you can, it's fine. It, you could be pretty good friends with your managers. And I know you and Rusty are pretty close, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, me and Dylan are pretty close, but like the, the culture should be structured so that they don't view you as a friend. Um, you know, to that point, like the guys all did a, uh, they all, all did a secret Santa this year. I didn't even know about it until after it happened. <laughs> so it's very clear that like, I'm not your friend, right? I am your boss. Um, well, you sorry, get in the I, way I didn't mean too. to. I didn't mean to, to interrupt you. I just, I think no, that's no, an important yeah. distinction to make. That you know, we don't want to be friends with them. We could be friendly with them. Well, it gets complicated, <clears throat> especially when you bring in a general manager. But you know, if we if we're just talking about the early the early stages of business, which is that you know that's 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 what we're kind of talking about here. And you know, if you take the general manager position out of it it's really hard not to become friends because you're in the truck all the time and you're, 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 you're around them a lot because if you haven't gotten yourself out of the truck, you know, you spend more time with them and it just, it just makes it that more difficult, but you have to make, you have to make that distinction. And even prior to that, you have to pull the trigger and hire somebody. You're not going to be able to do it alone. There is, there is good help out there. So, one of my points that I wanted to bring into the light is that everybody goes through that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Everybody has that anxiety about hiring somebody, but just don't let it stop you. You got to hire somebody and there are yeah. good people out there. Are you going to have some bad apples? Yes, absolutely. And <laughs> you need to <laughs> <Yes>. be, <laughs> you need to be working on becoming mentally strong enough to accept the fact that, Absolutely, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to fire somebody, but don't let that ruin what could be a great thing with a good employee, because there are good employees out there. Is good help hard to find? I mean, it can be, but it's not impossible. Anything worth doing is going to be hard, and it is worth going through the anxiety and the the tribulations. Because you owe that to your company. You're trying to build something here. You're not trying to yeah. to work yourself into the ground. And yeah. I mean, well, I could tell you some funny stories about hiring the wrong people. And, yeah. uh, you know, I knew they were the wrong people. But my point is, it happens. It happens to everybody. Yep. And the only way it's not going to happen to you is if you don't hire anybody, which is <laughs> an even worse position to be in. Yeah. Then that's when you end up 60 years old, still in the truck, working on Saturdays, missing everything in your kids' lives. That's that's no way to go about life. Um, you know, there was there was an important thing that I, I just wanted to touch on quick, too, is be careful about hiring your current employees' friends. Yes. Um, because and why I, is that? Well, I, I, I had that happen, and it was... It was in a weird transition for us where we were going from two texts to three texts. Um, I like to call it two and a half texts to three texts because I was getting out of the truck at that point, right? So I was like, a ha I, I consider myself a half a technician because I'd go to a job, I'd start it, and then I'd call one of them to come finish it because I had to go run and put out another fire. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I hired this guy in a weird transition for our company because, that, again, that's another weird transition where – you like you said when you're working side by side these guys, but when you're still in the truck, you are going to become more of friends than friendly because um, you're in the trenches together. Um, so then when you go to get out of the truck and you have to shift into this seat, this new CEO role, right? Um, 
that that'll show people's true colors, um, whether or not they're going to roll with the punches and do what's best for the company, or they're going to be selfish and they're going to want, want to still be friends with you. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I hired my now managers, uh, one of his best friends for his whole life. And, uh, <clears throat> he just struggled to get with the system right from day mm -hmm. one the three options you know I, even like i was doing my yearly reviews uh my quarterly reviews last week with my guys and uh you know everybody you know for the quarter was at like i want to say between 2.6 and three options per opportunity mm -hmm. um and then all the way down there on the bottom of the list when i'm looking at the year view he's down there with 1.2. So yeah. he just struggled to get with the system. And that's going to happen when you hire people, right? You know, especially if you're hiring older guys, older guys are going to struggle a little bit to get with the, the new three options, good, better, best, um, you know, adjusting to new pricing at a different place of work. Um, so he just struggled to get with the system. And ultimately he had, he had to end up being let go. But the unfortunate thing is, it, it wound up ruining my manager's friendship with him and my manager's super loyal. Um, you know, I, I, I really, you know, I love him. I love his wife. Um, you know, we've become very close with them. Um, and he, he puts what's good for the business over anything else. Mm -hmm. Um, just like, just like I would as the owner, right. Protecting the culture, all that stuff. Um, you know, I had to call him and I had to have a conversation with him and say, you know, where do you land on this? And he was like, he's, he's got to go, man. He's got to go. So, um, but it, I, the unfortunate thing is it wound up ruining their friendship, um, just because he was my manager and, and that was another thing that he struggled with, right? My, he got promoted to manager and now he has to listen to his lifelong friend. Um, you don't really know when you're, when you're hiring guys, how things are going to work out who's going to step up who's going to show leadership um abilities and you know unfortunately you know it was a it was a hard lesson that i had to learn um that you know you really got to be careful about who you hire yeah. especially it, you know so now we have a no friend policy friends can't even apply um and I've always had a no family member policy yeah. um, because things, things can get ugly, you know? Um, and it's a shame, you know, he lost a lifelong friend. Um, but uh, you know, that, that was a lesson for, I think for both of us, for him as well, you know, if yeah. he, if he ever wants to go on and start his own business, which I hope he doesn't cause he, he's a great asset to our business. Um, but if he ever wants to, he, he now has that experience already. So it, yeah. you know we all learn together right as a as a company you know our technicians you know our csr our office manager our service manager general manager and as owners you know we're we're all kind of that's why it's so important to have a good culture because we are all kind of learning together yeah and you know you would go through periods of really big growth I, and you kind of had a bigger company than me to start last year um <clears throat> but you know my company went through a huge growth period mm -hmm. um and it was fun to watch yeah uh and it was fun to be a part of but with that comes growing pains and having the right team hiring the right people that are going to roll with the punches that are going to go through those growing pains with you that are going to understand hey now we're doing weekly meetings because we all need to be on the same page right Starting the week off, we all need to be on the same page about any changes we made, any, you know, structure changes, any communication changes. Um, that's a big thing that I want to, I want to focus on, but. Um, well, sorry, I kind of ran off on position. a tangent there. No, that's all right. But what I want to point out is, is that you put yourself in the position to be able to handle that growth because you did say, you know what, this is going to be uncomfortable, but I'm going to add these people. And I'm just going to take the risk of whether or not they're the right person. And we all have to do that. And that's so important when you're a one truck operation and you're trying to get to the next level, you know, every journey starts with the, you know, a thousand mile journey starts with the first step, you know, and you, you, 
it's important to point out that when your plumbing company started taking off, like like is going to happen when you start systemizing and you start following the the MDP process, you have to be able to say, I'm going to add people. So if you're scared, just do it scared. And just it's the timing's never going to be right. And the, the person that you hire, you just have to make the best decision that you can make. If, if there are criteria in place, background check, driving record, face-to-face interview, that's about as, you know, that's about as far as you can go and you have to take a chance and you have to know that you're, you have, you have the ability to discern whether or not that that was a good decision and that's how you grow. But, but always be ready as we wrap up, always be ready to have the conversation with somebody about coming to work for you. Like my general manager now, we've, he's, he's been here for years and I met him at a campground. Like neither one of us were looking for anybody, but we started a, a conversation. And when we left the campground, we had each other's contact information and we just, we just chatted from time to time for the next, I don't know, it was six months or a year. And then things lined up. So always put yourself in a position to have the conversation and just know that it's probably never going to be the right timing to be totally com- comfortable hiring somebody, but do it anyway. Yeah, I think that perfectly sums it up. I think so too. Well, I'm glad we got to meet today. I'm glad uh, I don't I don't have much. I've got some limbs to go pick up and all my guys are safe and I'm just I'm happy about that. And and this this podcast has made me uh realize how thankful I am for the for the guys that that choose to come to work at my company and I'm just, you know, things like this <clears throat> excuse me, things like this really kind of bring that to light. So it's a yeah. it's a good day. Even though we had a, a, a bad storm last night, it's a good day today. Yeah. Well, that storm's just about gonna hit us. Just started raining outside here. So um Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. I don't think I don't think we're gonna have any uh, tornadoes or just gonna have some crazy sixty mile an hour gusts of wind, but we'll survive. <laughs> Yeah. All right, man. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of the Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below, and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.